Good day to you, Bridge Nation. This is the Public Eye with the Open Mind on the Bridge 99 FM. I'm Ronald Thwaites. My co-host, the Honorable Pernell Charles O.J., will be here in a few minutes. We're happy to welcome you in the meanwhile. Thank you for being a part of the Bridge Nation, that radio station which intentionally, almost exclusively, reaches out to the diaspora, the people of Jamaican origin, no matter how remote the people of Jamaican affection who just love this place anywhere in the world. Check us on the bridge, 99.13579 on the FM dial. <clears throat> the diaspora, the Jamaican diaspora, so critical to the welfare and the growth of our country, material and spiritual, is the only group that over my 52 years in broadcasting I've never spoken to directly, and therefore that's the reason why I'm here, not exclusively, but directly. We want to know your concerns. We want to be your spokesperson for interests in Jamaica and among people of Jamaican custom and love who live abroad. So join us. In a few minutes, we'll be connecting with Erwin Clare on our sister station, Ira Jam Radio in New York, for the Global Connection Hour. And remember, you can watch our live stream at www.thebridge99fm.com, wherever you are in the world, and follow us on Instagram at the Bridge 99 fm and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Bridge 99 fm to watch previous episodes of this show. You can keep up with all the happenings by downloading the Bridge 99 FM app in the Google Play Store and the Apple Store. That's all the coordinates you need except the phone numbers, which I'll be happy to give you. WhatsApp, it's 876-551-5782. And the studio line is 876-676-4996. If you like me and can't remember numbers, then make sure you write them down. Happy to be with you. Thanks to all those who make it possible. In the Global Connection, in a few minutes, development engineer, social entrepreneur, futurist, my goodness, award-winning writer and performance artist Dr. Claire Nelson will join us for a discussion about her role as convener of the National Caribbean American Heritage Month, National Caribbean Heritage Month, celebrated in June upon us. She'll tell us about the month's importance and some of the activities that are slated for this year. Didn't know of it, or probably forgetting it. Anxious to be reminded, anxious to promote participation. That's what you need. Later in the show, head of the Caribbean Center for Educational Planning and newly pr promoted professor and program coordinator in the School of Education, the Faculty of Humanities and Education at the University of the West Indies, Dr. Knute Thompson, will be our guest. He is anxious that we reimagine leadership, leadership in the country, leadership in the university, in all our spheres. How could we pick a more important subject now when Jamaica is shuddering with the uncertainty of which leader to believe, what their motives are, how much are they servants of the people, or how much are they self-interested moguls, all of these issues when Dr. Thompson joins us in the second half of the public eye today. I'm concerned, you know, when we join Erwin, you'll tell me um, about what I hear on the international scene. We, we'll talk a good bit about the local scene. But I noticed the increasing rapprochement taking place between Russia and China. The two prime ministers are dealing a, a meeting, I believe, in, in uh, Beijing. And the issue is, is China going to enter the Ukrainian conflict indirectly by supplying resources, armaments to Russia? That could change the entire uh, equation of that particular conflict, you know. And please don't think that it is immaterial for a little country like Jamaica, thousands of miles away. World uncertainty impacts on us very, very definitely and, and critically. It is a truism if it is a, a, a cliché that when the major countries of the world uh, 
start to sneeze, we get pneumonia. Yeah? So just bear that in mind. All of the rosy pictures about economic recovery, which, which the Bank of Jamaica happily was able to give us a few days ago, all of those can be upended. They, they acknowledge this, by the way, by um, uncertain economic world economic conditions. And I noticed the jitteriness among the financial markets as the war in Ukraine, the unsettled aspect of Central Europe, uh, continues. And we have to be mindful of that and we have to put our house in order. We have to view who is in charge of what portfolio and how the development projects of each of these uh, uh, portfolios is, is, is working out in order to be more self-sustaining, in order to be more export-oriented, not just to talk, not just a bag of mouth, but plenty action. On that note, a man of action, Erwin Clare of Ari Jam Radio, join us for the Global Connection. What do you call me now, sir? A man of what? Action, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for that. And, and, and thanks for, for allowing us into your conversation and to welcome you to our audience. And to say to you that uh, it's, a, it's a great day here in New York. It's bright and sunny. And uh, we're looking forward to a, a, a significant presentation here today. I mean, we're coming off Ronnie and Pernell um, of um, the last press conference, which we were told was going to be a brief press conference, but end up to be a very long press conference. Which and one was that? We haven't. We haven't. Tell <laughs> us, several, right? Tell us what you heard. <laughs> well, well, Parnell <laughs> is a little delayed, so he'll join us shortly. Okay. And then the Prime Minister's press conference last was it Monday evening. Uh huh. And, oh, that um, one. Yes, that yeah. one. That one. And you know, apart from the other situations which were of interest to many, I would imagine, one of the things that st stood out for me was the, the glossing over of a change or the new minister with responsibility to, to the diaspora affairs. I felt that was just kind of glossed over. There was no emphasis on it and it caused a consternation on my part and many here in the diaspora. Uh, we welcome the new minister, and we look forward. Who is to that, Mr. Mr. Terry Long? Yes, Mr. Uh -huh. Terry Long. But then, w one of the thoughts I have, tell me if this resonates with you, Erwin, is that we've had a, a succession of persons in that role. Yes. First of all, I don't think a minister of state is adequate to to meet the needs of the diaspora and the potential of diaspora connection. That's first. Secondly, um, it, the the and and this is no reflection on any incumbents past or present secondly there have been changes because it takes a time to get to know the diaspora and to heed them and to hear them and to move with them and to move for them and when you change ministers i'm so sorry i i, I uh, had had regard for senator leslie campbell um mr terry long is going to have to take months if not years to get to the stage where mr campbell would have been eh Without a doubt, um, I'm not. I'm not aware of any connections you'd have had with the DAF, so which is unfortunate. We usually you know, like to have persons who would be coming in with some um, activity, some relationship. I'm not aware of such. And, and that, you're absolutely correct. And and respect respect due to Mr. Campbell, and we thank him for his services in the latter part, Ronnie. And I'd say many in the diaspora felt that there was just a lot. There was a significant vacuum, because I'm not even certain if. Uh, if there has even been any meetings or any overtures to the folks who would have been elected or whatever you want to call that in the last diaspora global elections that were held recently. Oh I'm Lord. not aware of any meetings that were held. And, 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 and unlike the first time around when there was a lot more involvement by the ministry, especially at the ministerial level, we didn't sense that one, sense that in this um, scenario here. And, and so there was a significant absence of want to say leadership from the Jamaican perspective if we were to f if we are to fulfill the mandate that we're presenting ourselves and that is to, to to leverage and advance the relationship between the diaspora and home which is why I feel that you need a presence at the cabinet level um, you deserve a presence and it's not a grace and favor thing um, it is a recognition that more people live outside than in on the rock one and two that the economy the same way you have a ministry of tourism or a ministry of mining or a ministry of whatever um it it it, it is the diaspora right now which is propping up this country's economy you know but without a doubt and and if you were to ask me you know ronnie i i look at the the the, the responsibility of the diaspora being placed in the ministry of foreign affairs which may make sense on paper 
in practicality, it doesn't work because there are always second fiddle there because of, as you just mentioned, not the lack of full ministerial role there. But if you're to look at a ministry that has more overtures to the community, one way or another, and maybe because he's a, av the avid salesperson of Jamaica, and that is the Ministry of Tourism, because really and truly, outside of that ministry, I'm not, and I also must give kudos to the Minister of Finance because he has been one of our biggest cheerleaders as it relates to the remittances that comes back into the economy to help the buoyancy of the nation. He has been one of our biggest cheerleaders. But I, I, from where I sit, and I, and I have to believe that many would feel the same way too, the general sense is that it's like a stepchild in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Well, uh, it certainly isn't even in the nomenclature a, 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 a headline item. No, but le and let us acknowledge this. The, the what is it, two and a half, nearly $3 billion that we're hoping to get from the diaspora this in any f given fiscal year, without that, the Jamaican dollar would probably be 450 to one, you know. There you go, there you go. Um, in, ad in addition to that, there is a, a, a whole level of support that takes place, not through the Bank of Jamaica or any of the remittance agencies, but in the back pockets of diaspora people who come back, mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. barrels, mm -hmm. and in all other areas of cooperation, the schools mm -hmm. I can speak mm -hmm. of and vouch for um, from, from personal experience. Mm -hmm. Now, in these circumstances, yes, this it re requires energy, it requires marketing, it requires spiritual bonding in a way that I think we are still under producing, undervaluing. Eh? Indeed, indeed. And, and that is why I subscribe to a presentation and a recommendation by Ambassador Curtis Ward as it relates to how a new, a new as we look at, a, a, we always say a new blended um, process as it relates to diaspora and government engagement, people of Jamaica's engagement. And that is similarly along the line of a Jamaica Tourist Board, yeah. where it's made up of members in Jamaica and in the United States and operates with the necessary budgeting in place, recognizing that to make money running, you, you spend money to make money. And, and when you consider what comes back from the diaspora and the potential, I'm even more impressed in the potential because it's not to say it, we, we're, we're, we're saying it's a given what happens now and we should nurture it, but the potential cannot be expected to be achieved by doing what we're doing now. There has to be more of an aggressive approach, which involves, as you rightfully indicate, the whole marketing and outreach to our society here in the diaspora. Look here, I want to, I'm glad we've, we've focused on this topic. Um, this may sound outlandish, but it, it give it consideration. Um, a, a station like this one, which has a major focus to the diaspora, the one you anchor, Erwin Clare, at Ira Jam. These, th these media institutions, uh, Caribbean International Network, um, others that like this, deserve a level of support and interaction by the state of Jamaica in the interest of improving not only revenues, but social connectivity. Any Jamaican or any person of Jamaican interest or origin ought to be able to have a toll-free number that they can call, whether they're looking for a, a, a birth certificate, a passport, a, um, a knowledge about ac acquiring land, a dead left estate. I, I hold out myself. I am prepared to accept queries on behalf of the people who listen to us on this station, yes, in order to be able to assist because the last thing we want is for our Jamaican people separate by whatever circumstances to be bereft of, of, of the linkage which, which validates them and assists us. In, indeed, and, and, and that's, that is the, the ultimate. Yeah. And, I, and I think that you know, as we make small steps towards that, I don't think our society is even, uh, is, is even interested in small steps anymore. There are, too, there are too much opportunities that are being left hanging. It's like the low-hanging fruit that just keeps landing on the ground, and we're not there to even pick them up. We're not even there to pick the fruits, much less those who are falling on the ground. You, and I think these opportunities are leaving us rapidly. Right? Well, you, you, we, we need some in, interministerial connectivity because um, my view is that there's a, a many, many people of Jamaican origin and, and, and affection 
have resources or can mobilize resources that they would want to invest in this country. That is far better for us. That is a, a, a level of almost related domestic savings being invested in the country. Huh? Indeed, and indeed. therefore, therefore, we we need to 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 ensure that whatever news, whatever um, uh, information on the financial markets, on any of the aspects of Jamaican life that you need, you have at your fingertips. Indeed, kudos for the work that you're doing. But more than that, we it's need required. to be able. To, yes. to, to do this and it has to be normative not exceptional and, and you know why it's because why it becomes so important is that as we look forward we'll have lesser and lesser persons migrating so that pool of overseas nationals will become lesser coming from home countries why do you presume that because I don't look, I don't see the streams of persons migrating as they did in the 70s and the 80s and even the 90s. Wait a minute, man. You need to come with me and, or no, I need to send you pictures. No, 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 no. Even, even, then, even then, Ronnie. I, I'm talking about from our region. I can always speak on legal immigration. Oh. And listen to this now. And li but here's the part that is, that, is, that is building. The part where our children are born here. Uh -huh. Our children are born here. Yes. And we must make sure that there are mechanisms in place to make that connect. Yes. Because that will now become a significant, I call intellectual remit, and the kind of remit that is not necessarily just sending a, a, a money transfer, but how you can use those skill sets to enhance the nation. Because I, as I said, I don't see those waves of persons coming in that will have a situation where we'll be sending home those significant amount of money. That's my, my observation of it. Well, um, I, I, again, that's, that's counterintuitive to me because of the, the lands I see which are longer than ever in front of the U.S. Embassy who are yeah. seeking legal immigration, hmm. not to mention those who are crossing the border in other, in other yeah, ways. Yeah. Well, uh, may, we, sir, may we pause yes. and welcome, yes. welcome the Honorable Colonel, Colonel Charles who joins us and take a break probably because we need to welcome our guests very soon. Indeed. Well, okay. I, I want to ask uh, you and Erwin a question. Uh -huh. One, all, amb all embassies of the Commonwealth of Jamaica, whether in Canada, United States, or England, yeah. is directed to serve the diaspora, whether they want passport or they don't want this. In other words, all Jamaicans overseas that carry a Jamaican passport have access to that part Correct. of the government of Jamaica. Correct. How efficient it is going, I am not here to say. However, I know that that is supposed to be. Somebody asked, because I was off the air, you were there. How does money come to Jamaica from the diaspora and who it comes to? Can you just say that it is they who, their money who do this and that? Yes. It, com it, it comes through the remittance services, <laughs> um, Erwin, you can help me out, and it also comes very, very importantly by uh, personal carriage and, 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 and transport um, to, to families and to institutions. Well, okay, so, so when you say that, you give the impression that the diaspora is contributing to the government of Jamaica, uh, the, but, the, but the people in diaspora contribute to their family, to their business, yeah, yeah. because they are investing in stocks and things in Jamaica, which, which is good, sure. yeah. and they purchase apartments goods and, good, and so good, forth. And goods and services. Yes, but the, the, the foreign exchange is the key thing, isn't it, sir? Yeah, but the foreign exchange, no, no, but don't the foreign exchange don't goes through the Bank of Jamaica. No, but, but, but don't but give the impression that a man in New York uh -huh. is working his money and sent to the government of Jamaica. No, 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 no. no, no, but, no I, don't, but, I, I, I really uh, but, wonder but, what but, I but said that could possibly give, uh, but give me that impression. Let's correct it. Yeah, but gentlemen, uh -huh. though, but gentlemen, this has always been an argument brought up in situations like these. You know, it's not the first time hearing this. No one believes or thinks and, <laughs> and don't for one minute think that a guy on the street think he's sending his money to Jamaica because they would be doing that. What we do say is this, money sent to Jamaica, right? helps to, to do a lot of things that more than likely would fall on the shoulders of government, putting them more, putting a more pressured situation and more <laughs> burdens on taxpayers in Jamaica. So it doesn't go into the coffers of Jamaica directly, but in a manner of speaking, it does help the governments of Jamaica. Well, I go even stronger but than that. Not the government, Erwin. It helps the 
people of Jamaica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. government it people. Jamaica. They represent, yeah, yeah, yes, and right? that's what that, and that's when what, you, that's what that you, means. When you work up there and send mm. money back to mm. your children here or your even from work up. Indeed. When indeed, the money indeed. gets back here and go to the Bank of Jamaica and they give them Jamaica for it. We all know how it goes. Yes, you yes. understand? Yes, indeed. but no, but there is there is you have explained the point. Yes, but there's an important element before we break. Yes. The, 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 that remittance ends up in the in to help the family, the individual, the school child, the funeral expense, all those things. Yes. But the 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 the, the, the the American dollars, the English pounds, the the mm -hmm. the euros. Exchange, yeah. The government is in charge of ex the exchange rate and the fiscal arrangements of this country, and they are directly dependent on behalf of us all on the supply of foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, right, uh, you can say you can say it more socially. It depends on the Jamaicans abroad who will work mm -hmm. and think of their relatives, Indeed. think of business, yes, but and send. What yeah. they earn sure. back and the, to Jamaica yeah. mm -hmm. and then that we all are benefited from. Yes, indeed. indeed, indeed. But it indeed. is managed by the government of yes, Jamaica. Yes, yes, yes. And therefore, yes. the initiative of that, the terms on which that, that money comes and is, 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 is transferred into Jamaican dollars, what happens to the U.S. dollars is a governmental function, isn't it? Indeed. Well, gentlemen, uh, let's on take that a break. We, yes. we soon come back. Good. We're on the public eye. This is the Bridge 99, the global connection with Irish Jam. As we welcome you back to the Global Connection, where we join, Ari Jam joins with the Bridge 99 FM with Ronnie Twaits and Perno Charles. My name is Irwin Clare here in New York. And I uh, just want to say thank you for staying with us. Ari Jam celebrates 30 years, 30 years of broadcasting here on these platforms. And we thank you for that. And look forward to doing, yes, another 30 years. So we trust whatever you're doing today, you're doing it to the fullest. And um, as we now stay tuned, Join in Run It Tweets and Pernell Charles. Come. Whoa. Welcome back on the bridge. We're here celebrating 30 years with you. That's a milestone. Indeed. Congratulations to you all. Glad to be um, uh, uh, in partnership. Yes. Our guest, Dr. Nelson, is, yes. is taking a little time to get ready yes. for us. Yes, yes, um, yes. <laughs> Uh, w w give us a give us a quick prips, Erwin. Is, are, we, are we going to avoid the 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 the, the, <laughs> the, the, the default on the thirty first yeah, of May? We are we better. <laughs> no, boy, I tell you, you have more op optimism than I. Yes, know. I have to. Yeah, man, we we will. Uh -huh. Because we will. once the markets continue their jitterishness and they're mm -hmm. just starting it now, yeah. yes, yeah. that you realize that is going to have a reverberative effect on us. Yes, and 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 we're getting a taste of it, and I'm not certain. And we know we, based on what we're told, can be the outcome. I even those who have said they have held us, they're holding us in hostage because that's what those who are pushing for a default, a holding us in hostage. Um, I think I think we'll come to a decision that is in our best interest. Boy, you're you're marvelous. Um, the, the the you know, Pernell, you will remember a game in the country part city. <laughs> those of us in the city called yeah. Sefe. Yeah. yeah. When you yeah. when you dare each other. Yeah. 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 That's what that's yeah. what's going on. That's what's yeah. going on in in, in, in the United, in the big yeah. United States yeah. Yeah. about, yeah. No, no, about no, no. lives. Yeah, you're yeah. not saying it right. Oh, what, oh, oh, yeah, you're putting it in a, in a grammar, grammar, grammar. Grammatical, right? Sefe. 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 Koya. Plenty of Koya, Koya, no. Look, I know. Koya, Sefe. Sefe. Touch a button. Touch a button. And that I'm doing in Washington. Yes, indeed, indeed. God Almighty, over, over people's lives, unfortunately. Oh, yes, yes. yes. That's, that's, that's the kind of toxicity that exists in our Congress today. Aye. Erwin, who would, who would benefit from a political point of view? Which side? Because Ch China, oh no, 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 <laughs> let's not go outside of China <laughs> yet. Mercy, let's say yeah. inside, of, inside? Of, of your country. Who I, would I, benefit? I guess those people who think that they'll, they'll say that they prove a point and this is what they can do. They, they don't, they don't, I don't think they think they're thinking further than their nose right now. There's a group of persons who are holding the speaker accountable, there's a group of persons who we can take one person. To bring the speaker down, all right. Uh, and along, that's uh, among whom is that? Is that the, 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 the group Tiffin boy in New York? That him too. <laughs> you see, just uh, just as though you have in, in in Florida, one one parent yeah. suggests that our laureate's book is not is not consistent with their belief in the school system, and they ban the book. Yeah. 
There you go. Uh-huh. That's the environment we live in today. And, and that's but they, why... But no, but then they call that democracy. That is not democracy. Yeah, well, well, because part of the whole democracy, too, is that persons who get into the positions and now realize their minority positions yeah. put so in rules and regulations to guarantee their roles. Okay. So, so, so the, the, the tail wagged the dog. There you go. Aye. And that is, that is a ge- that, that emboldens them to, to, to carry out the game mm-hmm. that is going on now, the game mm-hmm. of Sefe. Yeah, Sefe, yes, that's okay. what it says. Well, yes. you know, but, but Rani, even if you, if you use our language as a Sefe, yeah. anybody who touch get hurt, you know. Yeah. What, what, what this In other words, if yeah. you touch me, yeah. I go and lick your dog. So, so that is the but, that but is the question you are asking. Who wins? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but, but no, you nobody see, wins. When you when, when you realize it, there's another expression called scorch earth, where you're fighting away that you know, say you're going to go dead, but all you want to make sure is that if you're dead, next man dead too. Well, Ronnie, how that go? Ronnie, listen to this one for ten seconds. Uh-huh. When I was about nine years old, two boys were fighting at school. Uh-huh. And my job was to separate them oh. and pull the one that was being hurt yeah. away. Uh-huh. And the one that ran away flung a stone, uh-huh. not at me, uh-huh. but at the one that I was taking away. Yeah. It hit me in like my you. head. You see that now? 70 years hence. Yeah. I did a, an x-ray the other day. The yes. doctor asked me if I have ever had a stroke. Yeah. I said, mm. why? He said, because it's a scar on, on your brain. brain, which indicates you had a stroke. Ronnie, when I get the hit, I probably about nine years old. Mm-hmm. The whole of this the land come up before me, and I was mm. stepping up to catch it. <laughs> because had a stroke. it was rolling out. Yeah. And yeah. my mother said, I was fainting. Uh-huh. Follow me? And she so you must understand. Something hop, hop, Sometimes. Your head. <laughs> yes. So hold on now. I say that to say the two forces in America uh-huh. may not be hurt. No. But through we head go and get lick. I see. And, uh, you understand? But in this case, we do get hurt. And we are going to get strokes. We get hurt. Because <laughs> you know, a, a lot of savings will be wiped away and a lot of, <coughs> of pensions and all that will be wiped away. So, you know, I, and that's why I say you, the question you asked me, Ronnie, yes, they'll come to a decision. Well, I, I I hope so, but the 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 point is that for the future we really don't need this kind of no of, we don't no. of, of epilepsy just to lick us every once in a while you know. Well, that's the political game being played today to get one up on shit. But you see, this is the problem. The United States is the most powerful economy in the world. It 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 is a country which which symbolizes the the liberal values of of Western democracy. And when we go on with them kind of foolishness, but it, it, it causes yeah. a great eruption yeah, yes. and mm-hmm. a, a, great, a great disappointment too. Indeed, because you see, you have a group of folks there too. <laughs> <laughs> I remember once, well, it's quite possible that many of these people have never traveled either. Because <laughs> they, they don't know, the, the only world that is, exists for them is their, is their districts in the United States. You know, so their implications or so their actions or how it will help the rest of the world, they, they have no interest in that. But then, you, you see, um, many of them are Christians, <laughs> and c- Christianity is a world, b- involves well, a world view, well, you know? Well, and that's, that? that's very important for us to understand. Christianity doesn't make a turn inwards, it must make a turn outwards, because yeah, that's what no, Jesus well, did. Well, well, their what actions, their what actions have, don't say so. What do you have to add to that, you know? Uh-huh. It's, not, it's not what they think of themselves. Uh-huh. It's what we, outside of the Americans, yeah. Influenced by the American yeah. democracy, yeah. the American religion, yeah. uh-huh. the American so described, you know, mm-hmm. we are the one who are wondering what is going on that these two sides cannot sit. Then you, you are forced to look at really their democracy. Because you have the president and you have the Senate, and yet it's still the House can disrupt the whole country. Well, no. So, so we are obliged then, as we stand a little bit apart. Um, we're not self-righteous at all. We're no better in, in many respects. But we have sense and we have a, a spirit of, of, of mutuality and self-preservation. And therefore, that takes me ba- right back to, to, to jam down, gentlemen. Because we're facing this situation, we have to be as prudent, as careful, and as, uh, as, as engaged in our own 
uh, future as we we can't depend upon somebody else you know we're glad for them when they send the remittances we understand why plenty of our people go but I am very concerned that we should have an integrity and an independence which is not inward looking but takes care of of who we own and that is where I think we are falling short you know um, and in that regard I, I want to turn to in that regard very centrally um, we're going to be talking about uh, parliamentary salaries, I'm sure, with Professor Thompson later. But the mm. the, the, the cabinet reshuffle. First thing I, I want per to ask Pernell to to convey to you, to your son our admiration for his tenure as Minister of Agriculture. He 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 struck me during that time as being um, as being so energetic and anxious to increase production. And I hope that some of that energy will continue. Well, I am in a very serious position. I tell you why. Uh -huh. I was probably among the first five or six persons mm -hmm. who appealed to the Prime Minister mm -hmm. when Green was removed from agriculture. Yeah. Because I think he was doing very well. Yeah. You, you understand? Yeah. And the foolishness that he got caught in, yeah. I don't know that it was sufficient. something that sufficient to remove him mm -hmm. rather than sit down and say young man mm -hmm. you know let's go so i appeal to mm -hmm. say look let's go with this guy because he's doing well and now i find myself in a position <laughs> where he's on i have to say to my son look mm. i went there uh -uh. i was minister of local government public utilities and transport yep. then ministry of labor and i learned from all three ministries so wipe up your tears and let's go well, that's a right approach, but at the same time, um, and I'm I'm not questioning. I'm I'm in no basis to question what, what why changes were made, but uh, I have no basis. But what I do know is that uh, you, you, the late great Kiebelmann, Minister of Agriculture, a, a, a portfolio that he preferred more than any other that he held, he used to tell me that the secret of his engagement with agriculture was that he ran the ministry out of the trunk of his Morris Minor motor car. In other words, he went everywhere. He was visible and engaged, and he was a farmer himself, and yes. therefore he could resonate with them. That kind of energy and sympathico, Erwin Clare, yes. is what we need in order to ramp up the local production, which Indeed. is key to us being sufficiently able to feed ourselves and afford our necessities, that we do not have to become uh, troubled by every headwind from abroad, Indeed. especially Indeed. those running south. Indeed, indeed. And gentlemen, uh, we have a lady on now who speaks that, that word too and, and, and has been one of our you know, forthright speakers on this endeavor, an entrepreneur herself, a futurist, award winner, winning writer and performing artist inclusive. But, but one of the things that jumps out of me is that she was recognized as a White House champion of change which is a significant award um, issued by the, the, the President of the United States. And we have with her now, we, it's an abbreviated talk we'll have today, but we have with her now because next month, gentlemen, is Caribbean American Heritage Month, and she has been one of the major conveners in this. We welcome Dr. Claire Nelson. Hi, Dr. Nelson. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me on the conversation. <laughs> yes, we, we, welcome, we, Doctor. Welcome. We're glad for you. Tell us about Caribbean Heritage Month, Caribbean American Heritage Month. I, uh, remind us w w how, what its history is and what's going to happen this year. Very quickly. So we started this movement in order to really uh, strengthen the ability for the Caribbean diaspora to have voice, visibility, and agency with respect to U.S. policy mostly foreign policy and to some extent domestic policy as well. Because if you're not strong here, you really can't impact on, on how U.S. government deals and treats with situations that concern us. So since we uh, started our first legislative forum, 1999, on the Hill, uh, in 2006 was when the first presidential proclamation was done. So the work on that started from 1999, really, but then Congresswoman Barbali, she took it up in 2004. Yes. So it really was a two-year process between her first introduction on the resolution, then Chuck Schumer in the Senate getting it passed. Right. And then that June 2006 getting George Bush to sign off on it. So since then, every president has signed off on it. Mm -hmm. 
and we use the opportunity to train, coach, harass diaspora leaders to get more engaged in the policy conversation, move beyond parties and festivals and fets, and really have a fet in terms of how we treat U.S. issues as opposed to just complaining. So this year, we continue with our first week focused on sustainability, sustainable tourism, the Caribbean Sea, plastic pollution, all those things are the first week. Yes. The second week, our national agenda is Caribbean Restaurant Week because every <laughs> state up to Alaska really? have a Caribbean restaurant, yes. I tell you. And then uh, the third week, we go to Capitol Hill and we're focusing on session on the Senate side, session on the House side, and then some online forums on the domestic agenda. And then we close off the month with um, MSME Day, is UN MSME Day. Yes. So we're planning our events mostly around trying to get small business to talk to each other and see how they can improve how they do business here in the U.S. That's a full agenda. How does how does it work out? Is it a series of forums, speeches, interviews? Uh, it's, it's, it's forums, it's speeches, it's, uh, it's, it's groups doing their own thing. We are doing mostly online things the first week, except for there's a faith-based prayer breakfast one day. Mm -hmm. And On the Hill is live, so we do go to the Senate and the House side. The domestic agenda is online because we want to find all these elected officials. Do you know the lieutenant governor? of Massachusetts has Caribbean roots. Lieutenant Governor of Virginia has Caribbean roots. So we are hunting down, down wherever they are in uh, hiding. Uh, 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 and the Governor of Maryland <laughs> is Caribbean, is Jamaica. And the Governor of Maryland has Jamaican roots. So, so we are hunting down where, where they are and trying to get them to hear us talking about what needs to happen. What are, some, what are some of the things that you are, are going to be advocating? You mentioned an emphasis on the blue economy uh, for the first week. That's, that, that's new and that's, very, that's electric. That's critical for me personally. I have, I'm very worried about the health of the sea because so many people depend on the life of the sea for mm -hmm. food and economic security. And of course, tourism, like if there's no beaches, if the sea is dirty, that's it. We're dead in the water. So that's major. We're also going to be talking on the Hill about crime and security. In that, we're going to wrap in the issues about transparency and integrity, because that's part of the challenge. We're talking about trade and economic development, uh, because there was some talk about including Peru in the Caribbean Basin Initiative. That's a little bit far south to being part of the Caribbean Basin Initiative. Mm. So, so we're trying to figure out what else is going on and where these new ideas are coming from. And so those are the things we're going to be advocating for on the Hill. The crime and security is major. We start both mornings with that topic. Listen, if if the U.S., I'm, I'm putting, but really just, just uh, pressing on, you know, Dr. Nelson, if the U.S. could simply regulate and prevent the the traffic of guns from America to the Caribbean. What a different place Haiti would be, Jamaica would be, lots of other places, you know. Beg you, try your best to, to see what can be brokered there. Indeed. And, and you know, well, Dr. Clear, well, Dr. Clear, Dr. Dr. Clear, Dr. Sure. Dr. Clear, yes. Dr. Clear, just mm -hmm. hold that point mm -hmm. for me. We have to take a break here, gentlemen. We'll be right back. We're going to pick this up as soon as we get back. Important thing, Caribbean mm -hmm. American Heritage Week coming up. Dr. Clear Nelson talking with us on the public eye on the global connection with Irwin Clear at Harry Jam. Soon come. Thanks for being with us on the public eye. This is Bridge 99 FM. It's the global connection, you know, with Ira Jam. Erwin Clare is the host in New York, and Dr. Claire Nelson is our guest. She's telling us important things about yeah. Caribbean American Heritage Month in June. Indeed. So, uh, you, you, I, ho I hope you don't mind being very controversial and very pointed with, with, with your American host, you know, Dr. Nelson. <laughs> no, you have to. Well, I mean, I've lived here for more than half of my life at this point. Uh -huh. So I, I, I think I'm truly a hybrid. I mean, maybe I'm a, a trans something. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> we like Everybody hybrid. Everybody call me a they. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a they. Yes. And one said I'm Jamaican and one said I'm an American. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, so, we'll take so, you. so, but we really have to be. We really have to call a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. And so, this is why, as as I am tough on the issue of transparency in government, I'm tough on the issue that we really do need to do something about 
the export of guns. Because quite frankly, I don't know about you, Erwin, but I when I, I don't go to some place anymore, you know. Christmas you don't find me no big mall star. No star? I'm mm. afraid like her. <laughs> I'm gonna come shoot up the malls. So it's an issue for us here in America. So I don't see any reason why we can't talk about it. Yes. As well as part of the challenges facing not just Americans now who are begging, please roll back the access to guns, but it's affecting other people in the world as well, and especially the Caribbean region. Sure. Um, wh what kind of response do you get from the Caribbean community, Dr. Nelson, in support of the, uh, the efforts of Heritage, Heritage Month? And, and wh what, where do you, how do you disseminate the information? We're glad to do it here, but it's it a, needs more. It's very, challenge. it's very challenging because there are very few Caribbean media houses. Uh -huh. um, and uh, quite frankly, more people read the Glean and the Observer than they read the Caribbean media houses. So it's very important that we get it out into the region. Sure. The, you know, whether you're a Bible, you should be the nation and the advocate. So we're trying to get the papers in this region to carry it because that's where the grassroots people read. Mm -hmm. Those in the organized diaspora that tend to flock around the embassies and the conference generals, we do share information to those institutions and ask them to disseminate it. Because quite frankly, we're a volunteer organization. We don't have no funding. We don't have no major corporate sponsor. Yes. So it's basically, we do what we can, bootstrap. Mm -hmm. And we have um, around 20 cities on boarded. So we really give the local and state level people a license to operate as best as they can within also their constraints. Yes. But well, so one, that's one, how we work. One, one of the things, and, and share with us, Dr. Nelson, and that is the take up or the buying of respective Caribbean nations themselves to be part of this. We see this happening more so when we look at other heritages that's at, that months are set aside. We see how much their governments play instrumental role. What has been the take up here? Share with us where we are as far as that is concerned in, 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 a, in aligning the things that they do. I'm very disappointed because when I'm writing and saying, okay, minister, or so-and-so come up, or Kara come come up, they're asking me if I have funding. What? No, it's bad enough I am volunteering to run up and down like an idiot, going on Capitol Hill, spending my money to do things on behalf of the people, not really the government, on the people of the region. But I find it really distressing that they would think that we must now go and do that too. Mm. No, no, see, that's, no. That's their job. But that's you what see, we were talking about earlier, you know, Erwin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> you, see, you see, gentlemen, this is, this is something here. We see from time to time respective nations of the region will come and go to Capitol Hill. They do not connect with locals here. They have their own connections there. In this situation where we have Caribbean American Lobby. Heritage Month, there you go. Pay, a a pri prime opportunity for the Caribbean region to be working with groups like ourselves here, like the, the one that Dr. Nelson heads up, to organize and go on Capitol Hill. That's when you get the attention. <laughs> yes. Because you have the vote. Yes. The lobbyists might have them up, but let me tell you something. <laughs> I have been in a situation where once, I won't say what year, because I don't know who I'm talking about. Once there was a big CARICOM event, and they decided that no diaspora should go with them because it was government to government. Well, after they had their big meeting with the staff, the staff person came with a document and so, because we were in the building at the same time, came to our where we were and said, hey, here's what the boys are saying. What y'all think? How should we respond? Well, look at that. I said to myself, oh. you see these jokers, the thing they have, I mean, they think it runs like Jamaica. It doesn't work like that. The staff on Capitol Hill are highly overworked and underpaid. So when you have a consistent, trustworthy advocacy group like ICS, we get as equal time as the lobbyists. But listen, the truth of the matter is that they have to, they, they are, the Caribbean gains attention, not because the, 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 the Congress people love us, but because they are connected, they understand the level of votes that affect many of them. Your votes, ma'am. In, indeed, indeed. And, and that is why you look at a Charlie Schumer, go back to 2006. He was able to move this bill over the hump. Yes. You know, you know, because of the Caribbean connection. He knows where his bread is buttered in parts exactly. of New York. Exactly. So the question I'd ask, Caribbean region, mm. have they reached out to Charlie Schumer to have a meeting with him? <laughs> Boy. All right. There yeah. you go. So... 
Well, we, 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 all we can do at this point is to is to encourage you and sympathize with the fact that you're doing this very much on your own. But <laughs> no, but the fact the fact that you are doing it is a, is a tremendous dividend and benefit for for all of us. You know. Yeah, you, you know, you know, Ronnie yeah. and and Doctor Clear, share with us because and, and I know this this has caused some angst in our community, but I think it's a good example. It is also the first week in June here where we now see Caribbean Tourism Organization oh, having their month. And yet still it's not oh. incorporated in Caribbean American Heritage Month. What happened that there? Thing, okay, please let me say something. I've been talking to them. I have spoken to Edmund, Honorable Edmund Bassett about it. He know me, you know, he know me. I talked to him about it. I said, sir, please stop calling your tourism week in New York Caribbean week when it is happening in Caribbean Heritage Month. You have to call it Caribbean Travel Week in commemoration of Caribbean American Heritage Month. Why is that simple brand thing can't be done is beyond me? Why are they disrespecting our work? Why are you going in the media and touting Caribbean Week in New York when we have a whole month? Oh, can't answer that. But, um, the, the and do you know that those people have not responded to my email? This is lack of respect I'm talking about. Well, well I... <laughs> Yeah. If it was not for the bad goose man, I said it straight up. It was not for the bad goose man and the porters at the airport. Well, every time I land in Jamaica and I, and I see these porters lining up, trying to live lives of dignity with their cart, and even though I have one suitcase, I make them carry it. Hmm. And I cry. That is why I persist. Well, thank God for you because that's what we need, and that's yeah. a spirit that yeah. infects yeah. holy, yeah. Pu holy pu people. Mm -hmm. um, it needs coordination. It needs yes, it, it needs purpose. That's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Look yeah. what look at this interview yeah. fits r right into that. Yeah. Eh? Oh, so yeah. w w we're not we're not going to be recriminatory. We're just going to say, hey, this is a better way to do things. Eh? Mm -hmm. Doctor Nelson, what yes. a, what a what a wonderful person you are. Half your life spent abroad, but nonetheless, you can't leave out where your navel string come from. And um, where, where, where you left I know, it. I know. Yes. And, and I know. I'm very sick. I'm still working with Marcus Garvey High School now, trying to get lovely. him on board. And of course, half of you. Yes. When my mother was the principal, so I, I can't go to half of you. We'll look at that All now. Right. And it's for those gifts that we're very grateful. All the best for Caribbean American Heritage Month. We look forward to hearing all yes. the good news. Erwin, you, you make sure that we keep the connection going. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Thank you very much, Dr. Clear. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank uh, you, sir. Okay, take, well, care. take care. Blessings. We need yes. more and more people like yes. that, you know. Urban. Yes, yeah. and that's why it goes back to our initial conversation. Yes. And that is the diaspora needs more attention than just being as uh, add-on. Well, let us ministry. encourage Minister um, Terry Long and hope that he can give, um, he can get up to speed very quickly and that he will, in fact, um, tr trod the payments, the pavements, and make sure that he meets all the people and, that, and, and shows extreme regard and respect. I know him as a very personable individual um, to, to ensure that, that, that people do not feel less counted when, in fact, they, they are more depended. In, indeed, indeed. And, and I think the opportunities still remain, mm -hmm. but we cannot take it for granted continually. We have to know strike the iron the iron is still hot but i don't think we have to stay forever you know m before you go my concern is that in as, as stated earlier uh, people people of jamaican origin caribbean background are having children those children are growing up in an american culture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they will be told where they come from they yes. will be, be be seasoned of the united kingdom people the windrush generation are now yes. in a third or fourth generation yes. we have to be so intentional <coughs> with, with everything that we mm -hmm. keep the identity and the love and the connectivity with those people you know indeed and that's why i get I give kudos to the Ujas and to the Grace Birthright Program of uh, yeah. uh, who are involved in, in, in providing services and mechanisms to keep that, that link open. Yes. Because it's uh, important that special marketing, marketing, a special marketing must be done towards those folks. It cannot just be one glove that fits all. Erwin, I want to ask you, Ronnie, whether or not we don't have enough organizations in Jamaica that are not necessarily control under what we describe as government, politicians, that our diaspora can be in direct contact with. 
Yes, there are, Mr. Charles. There are many organizations. There's lots of work takes place here without government intervention. Yeah. And, and that's how we want it, in fact. We don't want to be burdening the government in some of these situations. What we ask the government to do is to provide more streamlined operations. In other words, providing the platform for more engagement. We don't want government to be doing for us at that level. It's, it's, and, and as I say this, there are many, as I said, organizations linked with organizations here. That happens on a daily basis. Nonetheless, want to make sure if people, one of the services that I think the bridge can offer, and I, I personally am prepared to, to, to be engaged, if people ha continue to have problems, they have needs, um, let us know now so that we can focus mm. on them in the global Rani, I'm aware, of a, I'm aware of a number of people in the diaspora you know, yeah. who want to do more for Jamaica, but yeah. not necessarily want to come through the political no, understood. Uh, uh, organization. That's why, that's why we're offering Because they China. feel that they yeah, yeah. get stopped at the airport, yeah. they get stopped at the customs. Well, it's, pro it's a process, you know, Mr. Chair. It's a process. And I think once we work out the process and, and mark the process, things will go well. Because, again, I give kudos to NET, National Educational Trust, that has a mechanism in place that augments the processes I'm so of glad us that's sending working. things through. Yes. yes. Well, I, I, go. I, I, I yeah, heard, we gotta go. I heard the Prime Minister hailing the diaspora. Yeah. Hailing you the did? people you who did? are over there. Yes. Who are making such great contributions. I, I need him to Tell say more, more of it. I need him to say more of it, though. Yeah. Anyway, I gotta run. I gotta run. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Run, um, run with that. All right, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the public area will be back after the midday break. Thanks for being with us on the Bridge 99 FM, the state, this station that's devoted to the Jamaican diaspora to their views, to their thoughts represented to the people in Jamaica who listen and our concern for their issues from the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, wherever they are. The Honorable Pernell Charles is our co-host. Later on in this segment, Professor Canute Thompson of the University of the West Indies is going to join us to talk about leadership in the country, the style, the character, how it applies in very current circumstances. Um, Had somebody called me. Yeah that I must explain myself about the diaspora. Okay. Because I made a statement which gives them the impression uh -huh. that I don't recognize them. Yeah. So I just want to make it absolutely clear that we weren't saying that they're not contributing. Yeah. We are saying that they don't send a check to, to the to government. No. They send it to Jamaica sure. and to Jamaica sure. okay. and involving Jamaica, which builds Jamaica. Sure. But, but do you know, you, make, do, make the, the Jamaican more comfortable and, sure. and, and, it's, it's and they themselves invest in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So it did Jamaica. But do you, so do we you, do appreciate that. Yeah. Do, you, do, do you agree that we need to be even more intentional, more devoted to, to, to strengthening the links between the diaspora and ourselves? But let me tell you what I, I, I know. Uh -huh. I have watched Jamaicans working abroad. I know to get up, bef as they say, before day, yeah, man. You know, and put on you know, a weather. coat in the ice, yeah. and come home night yeah. in ice. Yeah. I know the experience they're yeah. having, yeah. and in Canada, uh -huh. in America, and in Britain. Yes, sir. And that is where are we getting our best contribution from? Yeah. So, we need to show them, mm -hmm. as I said to the farm worker, you know. I, see, I, I set up an organization that their wives are visited while uh -huh. they are abroad. Uh -huh. The social worker. Yes. Because some, some were not really behaving themselves. Yeah. They weren't sending home enough. They weren't making any contact. Right. So we made contact with them yes. and sent a social worker to see what's going sure. on. Some Indonesia. want to know why they're not hearing from their wife. So we visit the home uh -huh. and call them from the from home there. and say that, this child is going to school, this sure, is doing that, sure. and you it want made a major difference. Of course, you want to build family while, pe while one parent is away. That's, that's right. Continuing the family, the family yeah. situation. And they will, work better. The family. they will work better over there. Of course. When they have peace of mind. Rani, about, you yeah. are listening. One yeah. man called me and said, boss, you know, at the first of all, I feel so comfortable. Yeah. When my wife called me, yeah. I can't go out now, no fret. Yes, and she that, called yeah. me every week now yeah. to tell me everything all right. <laughs> the social worker came yes. and make sure that the children going to school. Yes. 
that they got a close. Yes. And when he heard that, uh -huh. he was so happy. So, well, that, listen, that's but that, that's problem. that's how we must live life. Yes. But then, I I, I took a a, a a a broad position when uh, before you you came to us today with, when talking with Irwin. I feel there should be a ministry a minister of diaspora affairs. I felt that the I felt disappointed with the prime ministers uh, of so-called reshuffle of the cabinet um, last weekend. I felt that it more needed to be done, and not just from, well, principally from the standpoint of what the Jamaican people need from their government, but also, I mean, it's midterm, you know, and normally you, 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 you make strategic changes. Really, apart from the, the shift at the Ministry of Agriculture and the demitting of uh, Messrs. Samuda, Carl Samuda, and Audley Shaw. Um, <laughs> what else was there? Well, let's go back to Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh -huh. What is the Minister of Foreign Affairs? Only the politics? No. Is a minister, minister of Foreign Affairs. Mm -hmm. If you had a Minister of State in the Minister of Foreign Affairs dealing with Jamaicans, uh -huh. diaspora, uh -huh. that matter, listen to this. Mm -hmm. Is not only Jamaicans in abroad who are involved in the diaspora, you know. Uh -huh. There are some Americans and Canadians and British who people. love Jamaica of, so that, you, much you notice that they, they, they are doing more. I always speak of doing the, the numbers of Jamaica. Yes. Right? So I have no problem that. But, but commensurate with the contribution that they're making, almost three billion US dollars a year in combined remittances. Many sectors of the economy which contribute less than that are b coordinated and led by a minister. And I really feel that it is worthy of our consideration for the future that we have more Jamaicans living abroad than we do on, uh, on the country. More and more are migrating. Yes, we won't get into that why. But the, we, what we expect of them, and in order to keep the, the flow, the spiritual flow, sir, the, the social flow, which you were just sp speaking of what you did, which is so important, yes, the, and the economic flow, we need... No, don't leave out. Yeah. Don't leave out those who want to contribute to the political flow. Very well, because well, they I, believe yes. that their experience abroad... Yes could do well much more. Well, I, I, but, I, but will, I think willingly that putting, accept that. Putting the new minister of state there, uh -huh. I understand that he's going to be concentrating more with the diaspora. The diaspora. I, so it was so the prime minister said. I, my concern that I expressed was that as far as I know, he, this is new territory for him. Yes. And unfortunately, when you shift around persons in that capacity, they have a fairly long learning curve. Yes. Now, um, uh, and uh, so we, 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 we wish him the best. We want nothing but 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 good yes, for him you see, for his cause. You have been unfair, you know, because Am I? neither you nor I uh -huh. had advised the prime minister for availability. <laughs> <laughs> we are we are we are available well, in a different way. Bridge ninety nine yes. is allowing us. But this is it. But to to to, to sure. bridge that gap. Sure. Between the Jamaican government and the. People. Jamaican people abroad yes, yes, yes. as to how well they can mesh, uh -huh. as they would say, to, 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 to yes. solidify that relationship. Yes. But Okay, so let's, let's talk deeply about this now, the way we set up our government, because we are involved in a process of constitutional reform. Should, should, the, should, should the choice of a cabinet uh, mi mi person, minister, be restricted largely to rep to those who are members of parliament and a few senators as we have now or in the process of constitutional reform should we as some are suggesting get the best mind the best talent from whatever source that is available for for, for the work what do you think should we choose our cabinet ministers from outside of 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 the mps and the senators um he, he's doing that in a sense that he brought this new senator, um, who yes, Mrs. Yes. Dixon, um, in and uh, elevated and her to the really Senate. And they're not really connected to, to the political party as such, oh, I, based I, on their so he, so presentation. He has, well, certainly she isn't. I, I did, well, okay. It's hard to find people who can walk between and make a contribution to it. Well, is it? Um, I, I mean, there are in the in the past during uh, Prime Minister Patterson's tenure, he appointed two independent senators 
who were eminently qualified for that kind of work. This government um, has has uh, been able to persuade the, the Grace Kennedy leader, Mr. Webby, um, to to be a minister for a couple of years. You remember who those senators were? Yes, Senator Monroe and Senator O'Rain. And you would say Senator Monroe was an independent senator? He was at the time. How could he be? Because he wasn't he, a member. He, he was a member of the People's National no, Party. No, he wasn't at the time. He ran an election for the PNP. Uh, afterwards. Oh, that's afterwards. Yeah. So he, he, de- he developed there then. I don't know. But what I do know about him is that his, his acumen and his ability is unimpeachable. I, 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 I tell you something that you, you don't know. Uh-huh. When I was president of the West Indian Student Association yeah. in the United States, yeah. I looked to Jamaica for one, in my opinion, who could come and give us a one or two hour lecture yeah. on what's happening in Jamaica yeah. and why we should come back to Jamaica. Who you believe we, 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 uh, we brought to America? Must be Trevor Monroe. Trevor Monroe. Sure. And, 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 and Trevor did a fantastic job. So, he so didn't come as an PNP or JLP. No, but did we have to stop this nonsense. He's intelligent enough to well, come on. Well, exactly. And one of the messages that we are sending out on this program by the simple interaction that we have here is that the, 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 the first identification is not your political color. I can, uh, and you, can be, can, we can do something or maybe others can do b- better, wh- whoever they are, which is why I am in favor of a cooperative government, a, co- a, a government by proportional representation where you get the best people who are engaged or willing to be engaged in political, act, p- political life. And you, I want a government which may well end up, w- may well end up with p- people who are both of a PNP origin or a JLP origin. I couldn't care less where they are. I want to know their ability and their capacity to move us forward rather than what seat they're going to run. Well, well, I noticed we're going to have, and he's listening, Uh, Mr. Thompson is listening. Uh, Professor Thompson. Uh, And Prof is going to have to come and face some, uh, he should be cleaning off his butt. (laughs) Because <laughs> some fastballs well, are available. No, well, for him. well, I'm sure you're 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 practicing your run up. But no, <laughs> I, I have a lot of respect for well, it. So do I. But the, the 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 this is this is where we need to go. One of the things when the comments I had about the prime minister's reshuffle, and I pu- I put it to you for your 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 wisdom, is that he, the, apparently the the talent pool that he had is is limited. You know, and that is that is the problem because he 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 had to engineer two people out of the Senate uh, in order to fit two more, uh, two 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 entrants. And two that you two that you 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 you're satisfied of their qualifications. Well, I so. want to see their qualifications. I, I I know a little bit about Dr. Uh, Dana Morris Dixon. Yes. Um, I I thought that she would best fit in education because yes. she was a, 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 a prominent member of the Orlando Patterson Commission and that ministry certainly needs a lot of strengthening. Let me uh, not well, say much well, more. But she's connected to it, isn't it? Well, I think uh, it, one doesn't know, but the, from what the Prime Minister said, um, that she probably will have some responsibility for the Heart Trust, which for reasons only known to him, uh, has been separated from the Ministry of Education. How you can separate training from education, I don't know. But that he, he knows that, or thinks he knows. But she's p- probably going to be connected with that, and she would bring her, her perceptions and engagement. She must be a very disappointed person because the recommendations of the Patterson Report, which she played a large part in, have been largely, well, nothing has come of it. They well, say she's in a position where she, she, she can. She, well, indeed, she and can I, talk I respect. About it I respect it. that. Yes. Um, the other gentleman we 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 are yet to hear from. But d- 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 there's a limitation, and also you know as well as I do that I- I- within the, within a within a political party, uh, who gets what job, who becomes minister of state, or who gets minister. Be, can become a very, very contentious and difficult thing. It's, a mo- it's probably the most difficult thing that a prime minister has to do because if he, if he, can, he can lose a lot of internal kudos. That limitation you talk when it didn't start with the prime minister. No. It starts with the start person who the people and the grown who would select or elect to go to parliament. But prior to that, sir, even that, it starts by the constitutional forum that... W- w- 
a system that we have engaged. Now, the English constitutional system, the Westminster model that we, we, we adopted, that is based upon the English game of cricket, you know, where one side and the other side is made up of gentlemen, uh, not even ladies at the time, and that they, 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 they exchange functions and they play according to very detailed um, uh, rules. That is, th you know, my, I, my I do not believe that can work in Jamaica anymore. You know, my daughter is saying that I'm telling, yeah. I'm not speaking the truth. Oh. Sometimes I say I just got a call uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> from somebody who say yeah. it doesn't start there because they would want to go before uh -huh. a Jamaica. Uh -huh. constitute constituency yeah. and say I want to go to Parliament to represent you. Sure. I want to go there and do A B C yeah. to see that this happens and this happens and sure. this happens. Uh -huh. And uh, the next man come up and say, oh, I'm not talking about. Yeah. I'm not gonna fi fix the road and give it a bridge and yeah. to this and can't and it can it get elected. Well but but hold on. That is true. So if somebody gets elected, but you, but you know from your experience, and you, you, you're a father of, of, of elected representatives, that the capacity of an elected representative to get any of the things done is very limited. When, when, when we are talking now about, uh, long after it, it should have been, about accountability, yes, I'm kind of glad I retired. Because if, you, if, if you're going to judge me by how much water supplies are in introduced in my constituency, or how many roads are repaved. You know, former Minister Pernell Charles, that the, the, the uh, average MP has no, no they c all they can do is ask. You can't, well, even, well, you well, can't well, even get the, I, the, the I garbage collected. I, I don't want you to read my, my question to Dr. <laughs> Thompson, you know, because I have to say to Dr. Thompson, yes. Ronnie, the salary thing, yes. It starts that there's no base. I am a union man. Mm -hmm. What base you say to a man who have a doctorate like Thompson, or you want him in the government, mm -hmm. is to come here for $4 million? What? Uh -huh. The base. How much you got? The base and which. How much I got? But what I'm trying to say to you, I saw you in America uh -huh. get a first class education. Yeah. And I came to you to you, 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 you gone again on another big scholarship. Uh -huh. And you came to Parliament yeah. getting four million dollars. Yeah. Ronnie, to be honest with you, nobody says to be you shouldn't get with you, an increase. There's a problem when you say that to people. Uh -huh. They must ask you, why you go there? Yeah. I must see if you are thief yeah. you go there. Yeah. Number three, uh -huh. why you take the work? Yeah. And I said this to my son who has a master's yeah. in law from Washington University, top sure, class, sure. who have passed exam in three Several states, states yes. uh, California, Florida, New York, Look at that. who two cases yes. in a two weeks make him make more than make for five, for for five years. Sure. So the base on which the Jamaican politicians face the Jamaican electorate mm -hmm. is not recognized. You go down there and sp they say, yeah, speak, he spoke. You go down there and say, you're a lawyer. Why you come? You come because not the money you're getting. You have another way. And it gives people the impression that you're a thief. Yeah, but that, the answer to that is not Ronnie, what, not what happened. I'm asking you, Mr. Tweet, with yeah. your lawyer, yeah. your background, yeah. and you come down here, not making any money. You, sir, know, know from your own experience as Speaker of the House that between the years of 2007 and 2020, I was the most outspoken member. No, no, you don't increase. say it. You don't say it. Let me say it. Let me tell you what you don't know. Right? <coughs> is that the truth is this, that a number of, I would say us, a number of them who go to Parliament, mm -hmm. The, the parliament is not for them. Mm -hmm. The present parliament don't accommodate them. You're a, and most of what you're a part-time em employees uh -huh. because they could never survive. So and, and what they they are getting. Okay. So they, they they come to parliament late because they're coming from another office. Uh -huh. They leave parliament early because they have to go to do a business. Uh -huh. right? right. Parliament's a 
part time for many so, of them. So you think you think w- maybe so? If that is the case, no. Why well, say maybe so? There. Well, no. I, I quarrel with you sometimes. You leave early. Yeah, of course, because it was boring. And, you, and, and we weren't doing anything. <laughs> that was that was the whole point. I, no, Parli- some, par- parliament some, parliament some, is structured to be inefficient. You, it wasn't and your fault. And to make those who want to do something sleep no, or no, get bored. No, or do some other work at your desk. Yes. Or we get vexed with each other. and uh, uh, it's, it's crazy. Or go downstairs and drink rum. But I want to go back because I'm on the board with uh, Professor Thompson. Uh-huh. The point is for, from Parliament start in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. It never start with the doctors and the, you know, top uh-huh. class. It started at the well, that's why Norman Manley was so shining. Yes. You understand? And he had to protect Boston. Uh-huh. And, uh, and then it comes in. Uh-huh. <laughs> you understand yeah, the point of yeah, it? it, it, the it point is, we're going to go to the break, but I'm, I'm really going to say to you that even, even where people who are uh, perhaps not highly educated, you had quality. The, the, um, my mind runs out of um, um, uh, somebody like Isaac W. A. Barrant. Yeah, yes. yes. What an extraordinary p- contribution to Parliament. And, 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 and Newland, too. And Doc Newland, without a doubt. I mean, and, uh, and, and don't get the don't get up, um, Mr. Jackson from Hanover. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Stanhope Jackson. But they want to call him shirt dirty or not. <laughs> no, he made his contribution. Con- and, and Mr. Lewis and Mr. has his own joke. Yes, Mr. But Wright. In Mr. From Wright. Z- Z- Elizabeth. Z- C. A. Wright. Z- no. Yes. He used to call him Poker Wright. Poker, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking political history <laughs> here. <laughs> We're on the bridge, ninety-nine we have a FM. Caliber of parliamentarians now. Yeah, but the spirit, the Get spirit has the, same base the spirit has to be the basis of, of of has to have the basis of service. You know, soon come back. We have more. This is the bridge, ninety-nine FM. This is the station that caters to the diaspora, the Jamaican diaspora all over the world. We have a partnership with Ira Jam in New York City, and we relate to several other stations and hundreds of individuals all over the world. Thanks for joining us on The Public Eye. The Honorable Pernell Charles is our co-host. We welcome Professor Canute Thompson. Hi, Canute. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. Good. Um, b- Master b- Thompson, how are you, son? <laughs> my dear brother, my guy, Uncle Pernil. I prefer to call it Uncle Pernil. Yes, <laughs> you, you are both countrymen. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 you heard what I said about you carrying your bat, right? He, he was saying yeah. earlier that you ought <laughs> yeah. to yeah. oil it. Okay. You ought to oil up your bat because he's coming with some heavy bowling. Professor Canoe yes. Thompson is a professor of educational leadership at the University of the West Indies. And we asked him to join us today because he, he expressed in his inaugural professorial lecture uh, some criteria of leadership, particularly leadership in public service that we thought would be useful to apply to present circumstances and also be a guide for those who aspire towards leadership uh, uh, here and in the diaspora. Canute, are we being served well by, the, first of all, the concept, the philosophy of leadership and how it is applied right now in many different I- areas? And I, I, I don't think we can avoid the particular issue of how we remunerate, how we pay our leaders in the, in the political sphere. Uh, thank you again, Ronnie. I am of the view that we are being uh, terribly underserved in terms of the leadership practices that we are seeing um, and the way in which we are governing our country. I would cite just a couple of examples. I'll start with the one that you have given. Um, I believe that po- politicians or pu- public officials um, who serve at the representation level have been underpaid for a long time. And I believe that an increase was important and necessary but I believe that it is self-evidently um, unconscionable that an increase in the order of 200% and over would be given. What worries me uh, is that we, ha- we have conflicting stories about how this came about. Mm. The Prime Minister said on Tuesday, on Monday, that Cabinet agonized over the matter. It really, it really weighed heavily on Cabinet. But his 
um, information minister, de facto information minister, said this morning, the matter never came to cabinet. Never came to cabinet. I didn't hear and, that. That's amazing. Yes. Yes. Um, and I, I tweeted in real time. I was listening to the press, press conference. Oh. And he, 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 point, he, Minister Clark was in the audience, was part of the press conference, and said, he said that the rates, using the formula established from the 1989, the rates were simply applied. And so there is nothing mysterious or magical. My words, those. They simply applied the rates. Those are his words. No, but that... And I said... Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, can, can I can I just say oh. because and if I heard you right, did you say that the information minister say that the, 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 what did not come to cabinet? The matter of the increases for politicians never came to cabinet. No, well, that's not what the prime minister said. That's the prime what minister said. Organized over. I understand what he said was that the cabinet was not the one who set the. The, 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 the prices, I mean, the, 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 the what they organize about. Who, the prime minister? What they, yeah, when he said cabinet and organize about it, if they didn't set the rates, who, who what they organize about? No, but I don't think that the cabinet set the rates. So, so, so who did? The cabinet, they, well, they know the rates are negotiated by the minister and his team. No, the rates, the, I, I, that always happened. No, but this was negotiated. If what? This My was, understanding, if I might, is so that please, the Minister please. of so Finance. So the, the whole of who get all of it? No, no, that's a public service. Okay. I'm talking about the pol political leaders. Yes, go ahead. Yes, I'm saying the, the, the... By the way, is my screen clear? I'm getting a lot of light from my end. Am I being we, seen we, we, we're, see, we're seeing you. We're seeing you clearly. Excellent. Okay, good. Right, so the, the Minister of Information said um, that the, ma the matter would have been determined by the Minister of Finance and the rates and they applied the, the relevant formula and that was it but earlier this week the prime minister said the cabinet agonized on the matter i remember a couple of persons making the observation including last week when when he first said it that if you agonize and produce this what would a non-agonizing process uh look like but the larger point i want to say for leader uh, the question of leadership though right to your question is that when as leaders you place yourself at a level of a of of benefit and um well-being that is higher than different from those other people you lead you are creating of uh the context and your the the, the raw material for dissonance for public mistrust and for the kind of issues about which um, Minister Charles, Honorable Minister Charles was speaking earlier, where people see politicians as, to use a modern term, choppers. Now, what's the problem with seeing politicians as choppers or conmen or people who are greedy? Is that it then makes leadership appear to be a space for self-service and for the advancement of personal interests, where leadership is very opposite the leader seeks to serve. There is a, a line used by John Greenleaf Whittier um, that says that the leader is firstly servant. And the prime minister in his presser on Monday made the point that it is because of his consciousness of the value of servant leadership that he is rolling back his own salaries. That's a different question to come to because you can't be leading a process of restoration and limit the action to your own personal um, circumstances as against infecting and infusing the entire space. Um, you use some time ago around the, ter the term leaven. Uh, unless you, you act as a leaven that, that raises the entire quality of leadership across the space you're not leading if you're not doing that and so part of the issue i think we face as a society is that leadership is self-serving rather than other and public serving does does well, me... let, let, can i ask him a question sure mr thompson tell me do you believe that the professionals who are in parliament today are being properly paid as parliamentarians using their profession for full-time politics 
Okay, I did answer that at the outset, um, my, my, my brother um, Charles. I said that I believe that the, the, the levels of remuneration prior to these increases, the level was low. But the solution being applied to raise those levels, in some cases up to the um, where the Prime Minister was getting a 214% increase, that is immoral because it is out of sync with what the rest of the people have received. I believe a, a an of, increase there, personally. There, there rest of parliament, I believe a 50% increase. The rest of parliament here as you're talking. Would be no. generous in these circumstances. No, no but hold on Not a minute. Hold on a minute now. When you take a runny tweet and mm. put him in parliament, right? Mm -hmm. With his profession and judge him against what he could make if he was going to Grace Kennedy or to separate. You, you can't judge against No, that. hold on, hold on. Uh, but what, 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 what standard? Right. Listen, this Ronnie, good question. the what first standard? thing is that the, the salary that is allotted to parliamentarians, there is no base. That base is not even as high as a domestic. Well, when, no, 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 I'm no, serious. If I don't, no, if I'm okay, you make how you kick on a turnie like Hilton no, and mean, give him four million dollars no, a year, except, and expect no, him to um, serve. Minister Charles, huh? except Speaker Charles. Yes. Two things. One, as in, say, for example, the pastoral ministry, in which I served for a while, you enter that area because of a vocation, a calling. You, you have to survive, you have to thrive, you have to live. How do you survive? It's not an area er, er in which you're hoping to make um, the kind of uh, financial returns as in, say, law or medicine. That's one. So you make a choice because of what is driving you internally and your sense of being and, and the contribution you want to make. So a person who leaves a lucrative um, law practice to enter politics, I assume that that person is making a conscious decision to offer service at a level of sacrifice to set to self because of a larger good. Now, the standard to your important question, the standard should not be what Grace Kennedy or Sajikor or Jamin D pays because they are A, smaller, B, made for profit, and C, are seeking to attract people whose um, track record include that they have been earning big bucks before. Mm -hmm. So the standard should be what is the what is normative in the public service in the public sector. But, but, so but, you can't have a permanent secretary earning four million as it was a time, or six million, and have a minister earning twenty-five million. It is us out of line. No, sir, but that wasn't what happened when Ronnie Tweet and Pernell Charles were there. That wasn't what happened. But let's, no, let's, no. Take, let's take up on something you said but earlier. You, you, you're supporting these increases, Pernell? Huh? You're supporting these increases and the way they were done? Let me tell you what I support. Uh -huh. First thing, as a trade unionist, uh -huh. I say there is no, that it should have a base. Okay, how do you that, create that base? Exactly. <laughs> how do you create? Negotiate it. Okay, but none of that have to, please. No, no. no. See, you have to tell me that the Minister of Finance has got up and carry on, I think, to Parliament. No, no but what? He has a team that that. No, no, but you, you have to negotiate. Negotiate with whom? With whom? Yeah, but who did you, you negotiate can, you with? Can, I don't know. Oh, well, then no, they need to find out. Yeah. Because it didn't negotiate in the Cabinet. He, he it went to the he, Cabinet he, negotiated. He claims, he claims that there was no need for a negotiation because there's an established base, which is a proportion of... of, of above the permanent secretary. Now, I don't accept that connectivity at all, even though it's been there for 50 years. Yeah, exactly. You, you can't. I don't accept that. Right. So, uh, but so cer certainly, your base. certainly that can't be a negotiated position. So I'm, I'm trying to understand why, um, w w what, first of all, as Canute is, I ask Canute, what is, the, what is the, the philosophy of leadership that would lead you to do something like this? What is, it, what is appropriate? And he's se se setting that out. And then, um, because we are politicians, Pernell and I, Canute has an interest in political leadership, it, I have to ask the question, why would you do this? Because it can only hurt you. You mean... Raising the salary of parliamentarians can only hurt you. Of course. 
the, at the level that, the that level has been done. Not, 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 not yeah. to raise, just to raise them. Yeah. I, I promoted that, yes. you, you know. Yeah. But, but, but to do it in this way and at that level can only hurt you. If you were an MP now with your additional money, or I, yes? yes. I, would want, I would want to run away. You know what? Run away. What because the, the public is, is so alienated, is so angry that they're going to take it out on the parliamentarians. And they, I tell you, it's worse because if the prime minister says, I'm not going to take it, uh, then, and, and, but the ministers are, are going to have it. He has set them up for, for some right, class right. of beating, you see? Right, right. Hold on, man. Suppose he had said, councillors, MPs, mayors, parliamentarians, mm. and governor general, and we're going to put it before a committee. And you say, this is what it is, you decide on what they should get. And full time, because you tell me that these parliamentarians, we could not be full time. I work with the unions. If I wasn't working with the union, I could never survive getting $4 million, which is... Sir, less, uh, sir nobody is against a, a, a proper wage, you know. Nobody is that. No, but, no, but, but the, the, the question is, is... What is a proper wage? To, is 240%? No, at, Rani, at this stage? but you are... Listen, if the, if, if, if the 47 percent given to domestics the other day, if they had a proper base, it could be 10 percent. I don't understand that. No. Uh, can you... But, uh, can, uh, yes, I, I, I don't understand what I'm just saying. No. Moving them from 9,000 to 14, or whatever it is, uh -huh. it was 47% increase. Uh -huh. right? So I would have been happy for a 47% increase no, if no, I were I, I, I am saying yeah. if they had a proper base yeah. that they were getting like $12,000, it could be 10%. No, but, I but the question that comes from it, though, um, yes. at what point are we going to establish that base and what are going to be used as a standard, which is a question that um, yeah. uh, Minister Charles asked. And I'm saying that one... One, one standard would be or could be what are the, in this case, what was the rate we paid, the increase we paid to the public servants prep just now. We paid, and we, across the board, we paid 20%. Some people got 40%, some people got 60%, but the addition in to, in, on average was 20%. Now, if you are giving the people you're leading 20%, how do you then turn around and give yourself 10 times that? So one reference point would be what you do to fathers. And that this is based on the principle of leadership, which says first to serve, first to serve. So, and, and service, serving that context really means serving others and serving the interests of others and the larger good. So to, to that provocative question you asked, Ronnie, about why would they do this? Would it hurt them? How do you advance the the public's interest and your own interest um, at the same time with this kind of increase. So what you're doing with that kind of increase is that you're creating a, uh, a context of public confusion and public mistrust, which really hurts us all. But I want to add two other things that leadership does and is, which are applicable to this context. The leadership is about solutions which advance us beyond the the mire of problems we currently face and I, w I would want to invite our leaders to ponder what would be the solutions relevant to this particular situation so the prime minister has offered uh, that he's going to roll back his salary salary but does that solve the fundamental problem that we face it doesn't because it, the issue wasn't about the prime minister's salary exclusively. It was about the, the increase to politicians generally. So the solution has to contemplate how we address the payment across the board. So, Connie, are you telling me that in your opinion, the councillors, the mayors, mm -hmm. the, the MPs, what they are giving them now constitute a proper base for a professional who is in there? No, I don't think. I think it's excessive. Huh? I think it's excessive. It's what? Excessive. Yeah. What is it, Ronnie? What? What? What, 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 does a, what does the MP propose to get now? 
My, but, nine, nine million dollar? No, remember, my, I'm adopting the, the model of, of, of leadership. Yes. And the, the principle of leadership. Yes. Um, respectfully, I'm adopting what Canoe Thompson is saying. Yes. That there, there has to be an element of relationship with what is happening in the remainder of the society. If, I, if you're going to tell me that I can apply my hourly rate as an attorney yes. to my parliamentary service, yes. then you are... You, are, you, are, you are no, s- I'm, I, what I am saying to you, I am applying your service to your, your stability of your family and your no, survival. Just, no, no. It, it, let me, the, the survival the, of your family. The, pr- the principle that I outline is that if you go into public service, you mustn't go in there to be pauperized, but neither must you go in there to be, to, to, to be excessively wealthy. But, but Ronnie, you have been in there for, 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 for you, quite a Do you time. agree with that? I, I agree with yeah. that, but I, I also agree uh-huh. that you, you support yourself and others by coming in there? Yes, but I can't ask, I can't ask for And for you a, can't ask for, for everybody to do that? No, so and I can't ask for a salary that is going to cover all, all of my aspirations. I'll take care of what you didn't get. No, exactly. You have me there. Uh, hello, sir. And especially, so I know, I'm gonna have, if, if you wish, have you again, can you tell me that w- when the people I represent can buy dinner, Yes, and when when they are in fact, when people are in fact getting poorer and poorer in the society, with given the ravages of price increases, inflation, and and all of those things, where the working poor in the constituency I represented simply cannot send a child to school now, having regard to the and Randy, you're, you're telling the me working poor. So you, you want me to you really don't, you don't, agree with you? You don't have any heart. You want me to agree with you that the whole constituency of few thousand people, yeah. right? You are going to say that you alone, what you get, no, a few, a few no, no. million dollars, no, no, could solve that problem. Uh, not at all. No. No, nothing at all. No, um, I, can you, you go I think ahead? that the prime minister spoke to this question in his presser on Monday, mm-hmm. where he spoke to the issue of the leader identifying with sure. the yeah. realities of the people he or she serves. Mm. So you can't be identifying with those realities in words, but not in action. You can't be identifying with those realities, and you um, assign to yourself um, a level of uh, benefits that far outweigh a what others are getting, and b disproportionate to your capacity. So let us let us agree, um, Minister Charles, that the salaries, and I'm repeating it now, the salaries were low before now, so there ought to have been an increase. What we're debating. Uh, what we're debating is what would be a reasonable level of increase. And I think we can say on the face of it that a 200% increase cannot be justifiable. It is self-evidently and manifestly excessive. So the well, question well, the comes, well, well, what be, would be the level? Let me ask you. Let me, that, you the Governor is, General, tri- tri- let me ask you, let me ask you what, bothers, what, what, what bothers you is a percentage from yes. a zero base. No, it's not. But zero. Rene, you were getting zero base. No, no, I wasn't. You were getting five million dollars no. a year. No, I was getting. I would, that 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 that's not a zero base. Uh, Six million two hundred thousand dollars was was my parting gross uh, when I left the cabinet. And you were doing one one one. One case you did could make more than that. Maybe so. Sir. That's a different point. If, though, if, I, was not, if I wanted, if I wanted, and to you, have, you leave that sir, and come and work sir, for that. But then I can't expect to get that, and I expect to get an, an increase that would allow me to live simply, so that others could simply live, and that is not twenty-two th- million or twenty-four million dollars uh, a give year. Give me an opportunity to agree with something that Dr. Thompson just said. Of course. The point is this: that a lot of people see you come in, and they say you you come in because. You can afford to come in. Either you had it before, or you have another way of getting it, because you cannot survive on what you're getting. That is why it is so easy to say the politician the thief, because there is no way you can survive on $4 million, having four children, going to school, and a family, when, and paying no, mortgage. There's the, no way you can with, do that. No, no, with the greatest of respect. The majority, so therefore, the if majority, you... The majority, the majority of Jamaicans do just that and blah, blah, blah. Rene, 
This is a worldwide thing. It's not just. No, no, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting. No, but that, I mean, one that is a member of parliament for not, not worldwide, but Jamaica. And it is, it is gross and immoral for, for it to have been done this way. The Prime Minister seems to understand that, but he's seeking to, to solve it in a way that can't solve it. Well, and, 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 as a trade unionist, I will say let that... Let me be clear, too. The People's National Party has no clear position on this because they seem to, have to, to be befuddled as to whether this increase is really legitimate or do, not. Do you know what they pay a councillor? Yeah. And I'm not... Do no, you know what they pay? No, no one is what? defending that, sir. What, what no you, one is defending that. What percentage they got? Uh, what, whatever percentage they got. It's if, certainly, you, if, you, the, if you're getting one hour, no, one dollar hour. It's, it's certainly not 240%. No, no, hold on. If you're getting one dollar a day and they raise it to five dollars a day, what how much percentage is that? Yeah, but I think, I think if I might... Uh, and five dollars is still not how they pay. I'm not sure I'm, I'm clear. I'm interesting, interested in the position um, being argued by Minister Charles. <laughs> Are we agreeing that uh -huh. an increase was warranted? A. Yes. B. Are we agreeing that an increase of 240% is not justified? I'm not clear on, on that second point. Well, let me ask I believe that. Yeah. Let, me, let me answer you. 200%, 100%, based on the base that are going, is not justified. Cannot be justified. But, but so, Minister Charles, so, 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 if, it, hold on, if it's hold not. On. Hold on. Okay. You're saying it's not just. Do you agree that do you agree that the base on which they are putting this percentage and, cannot and be justified? Saying it's not justified. You mean oh, that it no, is, but, it nobody is excessive is arguing or it's not enough? Are you saying it's excessive? Nobody is arguing that 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 what you say is the base, which is what we were getting, is enough. Nobody is arguing that. And but one, is, one, one is arguing that what you have done that what you is taking po is, po is, is, poor is, people's is, is money exactly. and giving yourself the Bruna joint without any 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 justification. You're now scrambling for for canons of accountability and performance after the fact. It's like when you go into a, 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 to buy something and you pay a big money and then you're told afterwards what it is you're going to get. That's the, the, well, you can't do well, that, well, Pernell. Well, 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 let me and the public of this country are rejecting it right now. Well, well let me say this to you. The, what the public need to say, and I'm a part of the public, what we need to say to them, you need to have a proper salary for people who are in Parliament. But that's, that's exactly... Parliament. No, no, but determine what is the proper salary. Fair, fair, we, did we do that? How do we determine well, what I'm gonna, is the I, I would like to ask a question. That's, that's, that's um, what I want to do. Of, of Minister Charles. Um, you, you, you have some nice children um, who you raised. Um, if I might use an analogy. If, if the food at home is not enough to give everyone the size meal that they desire and deserve would you as father take an amount that is so large that the children would not be able to get enough well you can answer that and be very yeah. honest about it i would not precisely right? and that's the same role the and, leader plays so, but this is, I'm, not I'm not plays. i'm not opposed to your presentation that whatever the base was what the final and the final analysis what the the, the, the percentage is, is is where the problem is. Right, but, but that's that. But, but so, but here so, you here so you, here here you solve the base. Here, here you have here you have the leader of the country, and the minister of finance, who is was highly regarded because I'm sorry his stocks have gone down, um, and, and others who are actually de de defending the the extortionate position that they're taking on the basis that they deserve it. No, wait, wait. but you know why? Hello, hello, you know why? You know why the private sector? Let me is, ask. Let me. Uh, pop, pop, pop. You know why the private sector is in agreement with it? They're not. But what are you talking no, about? No, no, they're not. The private sector. No, sir. I beg you, the private sector organization and the, the exporters association. There's no private sector man in that uh, level that you're getting four million. Sir, others. you're not in the private sector when you're in government. <laughs> And when, 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 when any wage group now, from a strictly economistic point of view, Canute, when any wage group, whether it's in bauxite or 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 uh, manufacture anything, no, when they call up, when they're called upon to exercise restraint, yeah. yes, on what moral basis can you do that? Can a minister of labour, for example, someone who's going to be very close to you, when when a minister of labour has to say no? We, we, we can't do more than that. 
On what basis can you say that? On what basis? What moral or practical yes. basis? People are going and, to love it. Well, you reckon the whole thing? Well, as a trade unionist, I'll tell you this. Yes. I think that it, needs, that it should be negotiated. <laughs> yes. And I think that it should be based on what is happening now, the survival of you can't say, You can't say you can't afford it. Dr. Thompson, what is your final yeah. word? You can't afford it. But <laughs> Why the, can't afford the, it? I want to take my cue from your final word yeah. that when you take leadership decisions, yeah. it should enable you to have the capacity to win people's confidence. Yeah. Now, in this case, the government has shot itself in the neck because, as you have said, the government will not be able to ask for restraint. So leadership must be exemplary is the point I want to, on which I want to close. Yeah. It must be exemplary. It should be able to provide a model others to emulate and the question i'd want to ask your listeners and my good friend um speaker um pernell is well don't ask me about the percentage again okay. don't ask me about the percentage because you are presented have to agree with you can you thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> this one is a vexed one but professor right. canoe thompson professor of education and leadership at the faculty of humanities and education at the university of the west indies bringing a very lively public eye to the close for today thank you honorable pernell thank you lafayne jeff all the best thank you so much for the facility here on the bridge check us next week wednesday goodbye <laughs>